name is Kathy, and today I'll be discussing music technique tips for second year and beyond. But before I do this, I wanted to let you know that because I have a great many videos now on many different topics, that I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easier to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. For first year students, the finger exercise techniques in the Teach Yourself to Play the Folk Harp book by Sylvia Woods and the finger exercises in Deborah Friu's excellent book called Harp Exercises for Agility and Speed. And using Lesson 10 in the Teach Yourself to Play the Folk Harp book as a finger exercise workout will do a wonderful job in helping you to exercise your fingers so that they will be able to comfortably play the music of the first year of harp lessons. However, when you move into the second year material and beyond, some additional help is required. You'll notice that in the first year harp music repertoire, that the pieces of music have the bulk of the notes that are to be played written in the right hand with just simple left hand accompaniments. When you practice these pieces of music, your right hand fingers get a pretty decent workout, and that is, that is beyond your finger exercise routine. But your left hand does not get this same type of a workout. As a result, you'll find that your left hand begins to seriously lag behind your right hand in manual dexterity, and it's important that this be corrected during your second year and beyond. What generally happens with a great many adult musicians is that they will be able to read the music of more advanced pieces pretty easily, and they will try to play the piece of music rationalizing that if they can easily read this piece of music that they should logically be able to play it. So they try to play the more advanced piece of music and find that they can play parts of the piece reasonably well and other parts are really difficult. So difficult that they just can't seem to be able to play those sections at all. Then frustration sets in and then the urge to quit playing the harp sets in as a result. We want to avoid this scenario happening to you, and the answer is in finger exercises. The goal here is to get your fingers exercised enough that you can execute whatever difficult passage of music presents itself to you with relative ease. This is what this video is all about. I still strongly recommend that you continue to use Deborah Friu's Harp Exercises for Agility and Speed book but in addition to this book, it's important to get Carlos Salzido's Conditioning Exercise book. This is an excellent book that I highly recommend at this point. When you open the Carlos Salzido Conditioning Exercise book, it may look quite intimidating with its 16th notes and 32nd notes. The thing to remember here is that as far as finger exercises go, it is all about the notes in question, and it doesn't matter if that note is written as a 16th note, a 32nd note, or whatever. You play the exercises at the tempo that you can master, so don't get freaked out by the way it's written. A note is a note. Because this book was written for a large pedal harp, when you practice the exercises, some slight modifications are needed for the folk harp, and I'll go through this step by step. In exercise one on page five, you play the right hand first the way it is written, starting on middle C. After you finish playing this through once, then play the exercise with your left hand an octave lower, twice. Throughout this entire book, you double up on all of the left hand exercises. In exercise two on page six, you will follow the same procedure as exercise one, Start with your right hand as written and then practice it with your left hand an octave lower than it's written twice. Exercise three on page six follows the same format as exercise one and two. In exercise four on page seven, play the chords solid. The right hand is played as written. The left hand is played an octave lower twice. In exercise five on page seven, play the right hand as written and then play the left hand an octave lower, twice. In exercise six on page seven, play the right hand as written and then play the left hand an octave lower, twice. In exercise seven on page eight, 
Play it with the right hand as it's written, and then play it with the left hand as it is written as well, twice. In this exercise, there is a section that wants you to practice playing two strings over and over again, and it speaks of practicing this section with your wrist oscillating. At this point in time, forget about oscillating your wrists and just play the notes in question. It will take you a while to learn this exercise, but hang in there as this is a very important exercise. In exercise 8 on page 8, remember that it doesn't matter if the notes are written as 30-second notes. Just play the notes as written at the speed that works best for you. With this exercise, play it as written once with the right hand, then play as is written twice with the left hand. If you have a 34-string harp, you will not be able to play the last line of the exercise because you don't have the strings required. Just stop the exercise before the last line. If you have a 36 string folk harp, the entire excerpt play the exercise as written. In exercise 9 on page 9, play the entire exercise once with the right hand and at this point do not oscillate the wrists. Just play the notes as is. Then play the exercise twice, one octave lower, for the left hand. In exercise 10 on page 10, don't worry about the notes being written as 30-second notes. Just play it at the tempo that is comfortable for you. Play the right hand once as it's written, and then play the left hand twice, an octave lower. When you first get the Carl Salzito conditioning exercise book, it will take a while to learn the exercises. Until you have learned the exercises, just play the right hand once and the left hand once. Once again, you can get through all of the exercises, then double up on the left hand exercises. It's important that you continue to practice Lesson 10 from the Teach Yourself to Play the Folk Harp book as a finger exercise relating to broken chords. At this point in time, however, we'll have to cut this back to simply practicing Lesson 10's finger exercises on page 58 in a way that I'll demonstrate in a few minutes. As soon as you have finished learning the Carl Salzito conditioning exercises as I've, as I've outlined, then your new finger exercise portion of your practice session should be the following. Start with the broken chord exercises of Lesson 10 on page 58 of the Teach Yourself to Play the Folk Art book. Follow this with the Carl Salzito conditioning exercises and then follow this with any exercises that you feel you need in order to further strengthen your fingers from the Deborah Friu book of Harp Exercises. Also, if you're having issues with playing right and left hand harmonics, then finish off the exercise portion of your practice session with a harmonics practice. What this is, is basically play an octave harmonics in the left hand up and down and then follow this with an octave of harmonics, right hand harmonics, up and down. In the space of just a few months, you'll begin to notice a marked improvement in your finger technique for both the right and the left hand that will continue to improve even further with the passage of time. Getting your fingers and arms exercised and strong and flexible will allow you to learn more advanced pieces of harp music as quickly as you learned your beginner pieces, and it just produces a wonderful effect. Hi, and I just wanted to show you the exercise 10D on page 58 of the Teach Yourself to Play the Harp book. Uh, when you first start out this exercise 10D, you would go and it would go of course go on with the other aspects of that exercise now um, when you move into the more advanced using of this exercise, think of your fingers as just almost like snapping your fingers a little bit where your finger goes really fast. 
and basically you're thinking of the thumb when you're doing it. It's a different headspace when you're doing these as opposed to thinking of each one of the individual notes. So, a little bit like snapping the fingers, a little bit. And I like this exercise, exercise 10D on page 58, in particular because it allows you to practice uh, the finger positions, the notes, in between an octave setting and get your fingers used to being able to play differently in, in that area. It's very, very good. So remember, it's just a little bit like snapping the fingers. Different headspace. And think of the, of the thumb at the top. Great. I have a great many videos now on many different topics and so I've decided to make several different video playlists so that it's easy to find the videos of greatest interest. So please check out my playlist page. Well that's it for now. To stay up to date with my latest videos make sure to subscribe to this free YouTube channel by clicking the red subscribe button right below this video. Take care!